everyone had the intent to, um, what's it? Uh, to start a live stream just as Eric is wrapping up. It's like Eric is just that impressive at his ability to carry a live stream. Whoa, that's cool. Let's play this up. This is not the book move F4. Um, but that's okay. All right, we are firmly in uncharted waters. We are so far in uncharted waters. I could have taken this. That was a free pawn. My opponent is offering me free pawns today, and I'm not taking them. Alright. Interesting. Who is this opponent? This is a good opponent. I'm impressed. Um, I mean, I got lucky, as I usually do, but I'm still impressed. I think we took this opening a bit too far. <laughs> oh, both my opponent and myself got carried away. But this queen cannot defend the g-pawn. Oops. All right, well... Hmm. Check. All right. Oop, there it is. So then we collect... Wait. Rip takes or knight takes? Knight takes looks accurate. That text looks powerful. Um, that's the target. That's the other target. All right, so we play knight g4, or knight g6, and then take this with check, right? This has to win. Oh, except they can move the bishop. Um, interesting. But if they move the bishop, I've got an ace up my sleeve. This is such a beautiful position. I mean, wow. Okay. Hello. Welcome. Oh my goodness. This is an absolutely fantastic miniature that, like, nobody except you is ever going to get a chance to see ever again. I better play the best moves here. Wouldn't want to mess it up at this point. Um, so it's knight g5 and then queen here, queen there, mate, right? That looks like me. This is amazing. This is like my best game ever. Wow. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's Blitz. Yeah, they want a rematch. We will certainly allow them a rematch. Can we get Bishop B5 in? No. Bishop B5 is our theme for today. It's the canal variation. Um, our hopes and thoughts and prayers are out there with the folks in Egypt. They want me to take this pawn here. I'm not taking it because that fork. They still want me to take the pawn? Huh? 
Is there a trap here I don't know about? There must be. I mean, I'm supposed to take here, but d5 equalizes, but is this better? That is weird. Um, three pawn? Check. If the idea is that they're going to do queen a4 check and pick up material, that's not happening. Right, so I just move my knight. And I've got a free pawn. That was weird. Okay. Yeah, I got them tilted. I mean, in fairness, I played, like, one of the best positional squeezes I've ever done in Blitz. And, like, my moves probably exactly match those of the computer. So, I could get it if they're tilted, that I have a single game where probably all of my moves match the computer moves. That it does tend to tilt an opponent. Um, all right, let's activate our rook. All right, so I've created a target for them to hit. And we'll pick this up. So now the knight's tied to this defense. And let's bring knights before bishops. Right. So now the knight's still defending the bishop. They could use another piece to defend this, but this pawn is attacked now with gain of tempo. Uh, also with gain of tempo is going to be bishop f5, and I might end up picking up lots of pieces here. Um, I might lose a pawn, but it's a risk worth taking. Wait, can I do rook c2 to pick up this pawn now? What's going on? Rook c2, rook, c, rook b to c1, rook, uh, bishop f5. Wait, no, rook c2, bishop d3, I take the... yeah. Now I've got a positional squeeze on them again. This comes to mind, but I'm not sure if it works. Alright, so they just simplify the position. They've had enough of my shenanigans. I can't blame them. Um, my rook is still quite active. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure what I do from here. We're going to try something. My bishop controls this diagonal, so I'm going to try to kick their bishop away, and also denying them this square. And my other purpose here is I'm not sure where my rook goes. I'm not sure where my king goes. Like, a lot of this is really sketchy. Um, but I'm trying to make sure they don't have a chance to play the... Oh! Okay. Now my pieces suddenly have some purpose, but it's still confusing. Wait. Wait a second. No, that's fine. They have not made a mistake here. sharp, but that's fine. My king will make it toward the center, unless it doesn't. My bishop's invincible, but my position not so much. This is weak, but I can't collect it. 
all my pieces are blocked, which is why I wanted to play this as early as possible to give this bishop somewhere to go. Um, all right. Oh, all right, take care. Yeah, my mistake. I, it was my attention was split. I should have, of course, introduced uh, Josh Sokol, uh, Scrabble expert, um, extra typo. Uh, my attention is split here, but yeah, of course, I should introduce him, uh, etc. So, here's our shout out command, which I am learning how to use. And it does not work, so I'll need to fix that. Um, where do my rooks go? This, our bishop goes back here. But yeah, everybody go check out uh, his work with Scrabble. He's been running some tournaments recently, and they've been doing quite well. It's been a great learning opportunity for everyone. Uh, I just finished participating in my first Scrabble tournament. Um, and it was one heck of a competition. Um... Interesting.
Next with game. Oh boy. All right, we got another rematch on our hands. Sure, why not? Not going to play the insane main line anymore. Our opponent is playing a Vienna game reversed. Uh, this is something National Master Zug Addict has played against me many times, so hopefully I have some idea how to play against it. Um, hopefully. Not guaranteeing anything. But I've got a couple wins against Zug uh, here, so hopefully I've learned a thing or two over the years about just practical tips about how to confuse your opponent in this opening. And if we play one more game after this, this is probably the last of the series against this particular opponent, who is clearly tilting. Um, and, yeah. I don't know if they're going to offer a rematch after this one. Um, Alright. So, yeah, we'll do one more. We have to let them get the white pieces here. Just play a nice, simple opening. No frills, no tricks. Unless they do like knight c3, in which case maybe we do something tricky, but <sighs> come on. Let's just try to, yeah, let's calm things down a bit and just play a chess game. And then we'll get back to our main program. Um, drop our queen back here, play d5, and we have just a normal game. Nothing crazy going on this game. Yeah. I guess my opponent might not be used to the three, three minute, two second, like the increment side of that, which can be a bit confusing for some players. I guess the three sec or two second increment somehow um, might have them confused. All right, so we are not winning this. Um, man, it feels like I should be winning here. Definitely feels like I've done something right. Uh, that's you don't just win because you played a good move or two good moves. You got to play more good moves than one or two to actually reel in a win. So let's plunk our knight there. Okay. Put our queen on a light square because they have a dark squared bishop. And a knight on a dark square. So if the knight or other pieces jump various places, the queen still controls a lot of space. All right. Take advantage of this. Again, aim for a light square. Uh, interesting. Interesting. What am I supposed to do here? Well, I control a lot of light squares. Let's push on the king side. As long as I don't give up e6, I'm okay. Um opponent's attempting something ambitious, so let's try something more ambitious. Take all the light squares. All right, we've extended the range of my bishop and start to clamp down on the king's side. Uh, c3 is still loose. All right. I was going to play this here anyway, so let's do it. Next up is f4, and I don't know what.
I want to play f4, f3, but that takes time. I also don't want their queen to move away for, oh, okay, they're finally doing something about my knight. All right, I guess my knight can temporarily retreat, if only to find a greener pasture elsewhere. Or do I take the pawn? If I take the pawn, my position collapses. Let's not do that. Um, if I play f4, knight takes knight f3, knight d6, pawn takes, it's not bad. Uh, they're knights offsides. That's the key point here. So if they want to defend c3, they need to do queen takes. And if they do queen takes, I just push f4. And this looks crushing. If they take, a, maybe I play e3. Um, yeah, I don't understand what they're doing. I want to understand it. It's just, it's not easy to understand. Um... Let's defend against various knight tricks. I mean, yeah, I am allowing knight c5 with tempo, but I don't think the knight's super well placed on c5. I think my queen continuously improves each time it gets kicked. So next up is queen e5, queen c3. Or maybe queen f6, queen c3, but this is the target. This is the other target. This is a target. This is a target. This is a target. They're all targets. So, oh, if I queen f6, they have knight d7, so I have to go queen e5 instead, which doesn't work either. Um, anyway, we have a dark squared bishop, so let's put the pawn on a light square. So I've given up on trying to win a pawn. Instead, I'm trying to win a king. Um, it's a bit ambitious. But I don't see what they're doing. So this is the threat. They have to take my pawn. But then I can play rook f3. Then I could play rook f8. Yeah, we're going to play rook f8 anyway. And that way if their king ever moves up to e2, I have a nice tactic at the ready. So... Um... Wait, rook takes here. I've got mate. Possibly there were other ways to do this. Check and mate. All right, I think that's enough games with this particular opponent. Uh, good game, well played. Yeah, so let's quickly go to analysis board. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad it's insightful. Even to me, it's insightful sometimes. Um, when you read chess books, they emphasize these kinds of points. Um, so I don't know how many people go to a library and check out a chess book. But um, yeah, now like, in, even in a Blitz game... As long as it's not bullet, you will actually see some ideas like this. Like, here you've got a position where basically nothing's going on. And so I see, you know, I could exchange bishops, and they have this dark square bishop, and I have a dark square bishop, and I have pawns on light squares. So I want to keep all my pawns on light squares, and I want to push this, and this, and this, and this, and like, 
I had an idea. Uh, was it good? Well, Stockfish doesn't necessarily agree. Stockfish thinks I made a blunder here. How so? Is it just a blunder of opportunity that, like, they should have taken here, they didn't. And I should have taken here, because my F3 idea, as beautiful as it was, was not convincing somehow? Uh, I don't get it. I mean, if they take back here, if I hit this pawn, they can hold on to it, right? What's the idea? Yeah, in fact, they get knight d6 there. So, f takes e3 is best. Threatening to take there, so they have to react. Then we corral the knight. Yeah, okay, so the knight can't move. And this is just weak. That would be how a master would play this. They would stick even more with the concept than I would. And white just struggles very badly trying to hold this position together. Um... That's interesting. Like, the knight is completely off sides. The pawn is blocking the rook. The pawn is blocking the other rook. These pawns are fragmented. The king's... Uh, I mean, we've both split up our castle here, but... Um, yeah, that's interesting that... Like, this knight being so offside and the board being so open and favorable to the bishop results in a minus five. In previous years, Stockfish wouldn't even think too strongly about that. <sighs> so, what I've been wanting to do here is uh, start a canal opening arena. And you might ask, what is the canal opening? It's this e4, c5, knight f3, d6, bishop b5. I kind of want to run this tournament. Um... But I also recognize I have like four viewers, and so it's really not going to get the kind of, I don't know, attention that I'd hope for. So um, I guess we'll just continue playing Blitz. Honestly, I've played that canal opening before. Um, yeah, let's take a few more minutes to actually analyze some of these other games that we played. This is a really good series with this opponent. They're a very good opponent. Um, Despite the fact that I knocked them out 4-0. Um, I mean, okay, this game was a bit silly. We don't need to look at this one. Uh, I got lucky, as I usually do, when opponents stop paying attention. Um, let's see, was I playing black? Yeah, I was playing black this one. Yeah, this is a free pawn, right? No, this is not a free pawn. Okay... Then I take, and then they take. Wait, so... Oh. I can't count, can I? Wow. Okay, I was so confident that I just collected a free pawn in the opening that I didn't actually notice that I didn't take the pawn. Okay. Um, right? Wait, no. No, I have taken a pawn. But this is severely better for white. Or this is not severely, this is better for white, somehow. I'm confused. Uh, but yeah, I'll have to fix my shoutout command again. Thanks to Josh Sokol, Axer Typo. Um, He's been running some excellent tournaments on Woogles.io. I think I at least have a Woogles command, right? Or have all my bots broken? Okay, at least that bot's still up. Um, yeah. So, yeah, piece development-wise, like, I've developed two pieces, they've developed two pieces. I've, in fact, developed a third piece at this point. Although I exchange, like, they get a little bit of control of the center, and we're back down to two versus two in my night retreats, so it's... Yeah, they are up a couple, a couple tempi here. And they immediately give a tempo back with this nothing move, um, which is a bit odd. Oh, what happened here? What in the world? Even for me, this is pretty special. Uh, uh-oh, free bishop. Oops. All right, but what happened earlier in this game? 
So, yeah, I thought I was doing okay here. Rook c2 was... Bishop d7. What's this about? Oh, the idea is I want to free my remaining rook. And I didn't like bishop f5. I didn't like rook c2. I couldn't find any move that I liked. This liberates my rook and also threatens this. If they do exchange knights, I have bishop a4 in pocket. So like if they were to do this and they were to attack my bishop, I'd have a place for my bishop to go. Not only that, but like that's actually a sneaky little tactic. So my bishop control of the main diagonal here um, actually does amount to something because their bishops are so inactive here. And because this bishop rams into its own pawn. And if this pawn pushes, I just take the pawn. So, like, the pawn structure is defective. Yeah, so taking this pawn surprised me. There's really no hurry to take it. Um, this is good as anything. This prevents me from trying to break their king side pawn structure. Um, so, I could play knight d7, defend some things. Yeah, it's just a game from here. Although, like, the evaluation was even minus two before this. So yeah, no, Stockfish sees that I control this diagonal, and that it's going to take some moves for these bishops to get anywhere useful. But also my bishop kind of sucks on c8, and I think it's underestimating just how bad the bishop... Wait, what? Is that forced? Like, the idea that you're going to let me defend this... Why would you move bishop e3? There's something strange going on here. I think Stockfish reckons that this rook needs somewhere to go. For this rook to find somewhere to go, white needs to exchange pieces. For white to exchange pieces, white's playing bishop to e3 with the idea of playing bishop d4. But I managed to beat my opponent to the punch and get my bishop developed so I can get my other bishop developed with gain of tempo. Uh, that's amusing. Yeah, so we can exchange some pieces and black unwinds and it's completely fine as the better pawn structure is up a pawn. And even though black's king is extremely airy and I don't like it at all, Stockfish has no qualms with that, so that's pretty funny. Like, if this rook were to teleport off the board, and somehow this rook could get back there, and the bishop could get here, that would be scary. But that's not happening here. Um, so, yeah. What a weird position. But there were ways I could develop my pieces. Over here... White played rook b6, which is another wasted... Oh, I did think about bishop g4 very briefly in my... Ex well, I was down to 51 seconds. I had time to think. I just got so confident that pawn takes pawn must be right because it frees my rook. But I guess bishop g4 is even stronger. Uh, how is bishop g4 crushing here? Uh, um... Maybe it's not so clear what white's best move is. Rook e1, rook c1. I like rook e1 because this approach is toward the king. Um, but, okay, we hit some bishops. White has to defend this bishop. Wait, really? Really? And then this... And then b5 and bishop f3 are two ideas here. b5, because we can get away with it because it's pinned to the other bishop. Bishop f3, because it's eventually going to land with severe effect. But b5 first, because then we can get b4 in. Right, and white's going to break up their king's side one way or another. And this... Lifting our rook is okay, because we don't get... we Only Stockfish would play this way, but what's going on? 
What's going on? What? Isn't everything hanging here? What am I missing? <laughs> oh no. Oh no, my rook. Oh my goodness. Oh my eyes. So if you see all that. Oh, uh, bishop takes h2. That just spells out just how bad this is for white. That, like, this threat of rook g1's inevitable. So white gets to play here. Check. White barely escapes with this king alive into an endgame where he's just down two pawns. And that two pawn deficit is enough for black to crush white. Okay, so that's why this bishop f3 is so strong, despite everything hanging. And that's why this rook takes f4, even though I'm like, wait, this can't possibly be right. I was thinking, surely b4 has to be the move here, but rook takes f4 is correct. Forking all that kingside attack nonsense and attacking this bishop, which is going to fork both rooks. All right. Well, I would not have seen most of that. Uh, Stockfish sees a lot. I just figure, you know, I want to get my rook out safely. If bishops, if somehow this ever trades for that, if these two trade, then the seventh rank might open because a pawn takes bishop. In the worst case scenario, otherwise, like this here is a wall that completely shuts off the sixth and seventh ranks, so this rook can't break me. But if the bishops do exchange and somehow the 7th rank opens up, then I have control of f2. And if I control f2, I've got like some serious 2nd rank threat activity stuff. Like if I could play rook f2 and, I don't know, bishop h3 and start threatening stuff across the 7th rank, I'm probably drawing in the worst case. So this is me just trying to put a way to draw the game in my back pocket in case I need it. Um... It's a bit cowardly, but what can you do? Let's check out this other win. What was this first game? Oh. Oh, this got weird. Um, I guess we'll run this through a uh, computer analysis as well. Aye. What's the canal opening? It's uh it's known by other names too, but it's the Sicilian opening. With d6 and bishop b5 check. Also known, I think, is the Russellino. But the canal opening is something we all hope for in the near future. Um, because if that canal does not open, we have a problem. Um, but yeah. I don't know, maybe I have enough players now to actually create and start the tournament, but I doubt it. Yeah. Um, anyway, so bishop d5 was not correct. d4 was best. I got excited. Yeah, bishop d5 is, of course, horrible. Um, I think, is knight h3 fine? The idea that I want to play, like, knight f2 in castle? Yeah, this is okay. So I don't have to play d4. d4 looked... Like, I was going to get my king trapped in the center, which kind of happened anyway. Um, but then we played king d1. It was okay, because uh, c6 blocks the knight, and the rook, and, like, everything's all blocked because of c6. So suddenly I'm, like, not completely dead anymore, and... I played knight h3. Apparently computer likes knight f3. I thought that would get in the way of my queen, or my rook trying to take here. Um, I guess I'm not supposed to just win the pawn. Or, maybe this is such a brilliancy that Stockfish still doesn't understand it. Um, and I was so impressed by the way I handled the second half of this game that I forgot the first half of it. 
Queen d3 is a blunder. Queen f3 prevents this pawn from moving and allows me to collect that pawn. What is so wrong with my move? Queen e7 is apparently the way to refute queen d3. And black has no weakness. Note this is not a weakness because of checkmate. So yeah, queen e7 holds everything together. And then I have to like find a way out of this with my king with like b3. And this is not going to go well. So yeah, the engine is correct that queen d3 was a big mistake. And queen c7 is an even bigger mistake. And yeah, the rest of the game kind of speaks for itself. I was so amused and impressed. Oh, knight g5 mates. Oh, no. I missed that. That is fantastic. Pawn takes. Rook f3. Black has no move. That is amazing. Uh, also, rook f3 is not necessary because it's just mates directly. But I like my rook f3 move anyway. The fact that both of those moves checkmate black like, speaks to just how terrible black's position is after um, queen g6 here. Bishop f8 attempted to hold this position together. Um... Yeah, black needed to do something more desperate. Um, so, I did find a way to win, um, but Stockfish is laughing at me. I mean, this is beautiful. This, I mean, something did not happen right this game. Oh, you're like Rook F3? Yeah. See? I'm, I'm such a genius. I'm so ahead of my time. No. No, uh, it's just me missing mate in one. Um, but the fact that like I can miss mate in one and still be winning is pretty great. I did see this mate, so I found a mate in three at the end. Does that count? All right. I guess against my better judgment, um, we'll go forward with the tournament anyway. We'll try it. Scheduled to start five minutes from now. I'll drop a link in here. We'll see if anybody shows up. Uh, so we'll create the new tournament. Unrated. I'll go grab the link for it. Um, drop that in the chat right here. Uh, let's see. How do I get to my own tournaments? There it is. And drop that in our chat here hope that that somebody's interested but if not that's okay yeah our thoughts and prayers are with egypt as they are enduring this situation so is the ship still stuck or is that ship still stuck.com shows the ever given and its position in the suez canal um it's been like this for five days, 15 hours, and 15 minutes, and it's cost us $54 billion so far. Um, and so the story with that um, is that during a sandstorm, um, this ship had uh, sought entrance to the canal, got entrance to the canal. Um, after having entered, there was either some... Well, possible theories are that there are mechanical error and or human error um, that this does not seem entirely weather related because like this canal has been used many times before sandstorms and other inclement weather have happened in Egypt times before so um, yeah this is not the first time that somebody's used a canal in the um, Suez River to try to travel between, um, I guess, the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean by way of the Suez River. Um, it's a pretty major waterway for industrial use. So this canal's been used quite a bit. This is an enormous ship 
that's been moving a lot of freight, lots of containers. Uh, high tide ends tomorrow. And what that means is that if the ship doesn't... I mean, they are starting to free the ship, um, starting with the rudder in the back and such. And each step of progress they make freeing it is a good step forward. But high tide ends tomorrow as the phases of the moon shift. So they are quickly running out of time to clear the canal. And uh, we wish them the best. Uh, or at least it'll get much harder to clear the canal if the tide goes down. So um, I guess one either hopes that the tide will free things or maybe that rain or weather or something will somehow get this ever given operated by uh, the corporation Evergreen. One hopes that this gets freed from the canal very soon um, so that uh, ships can freely travel as 300 ships have piled up on both ends of the canal. Um, one really hopes that that situation does, in fact, resolve itself soon. So, uh, yeah, I did share a link. If nobody wants to play, that's fine, too. I'll just do my best I can to uh, seek out games with this opening in the lobby. Um, but yeah, this is the custom position from this analysis board. Not that one, this one. So uh, this is known as both the Rosalimo and the Canal Variation. It's actually a really nice way to escape main lines if you don't want to study mainline Sicilian theory. Um, it's a very useful sideline to know. Um, it's really the hardest line against it, I think, is Knight D7, and I've not thoroughly studied it. So, yeah, I'm, since I do work with transportation and software, I find this situation, um, of some interest to transportation and I'm, uh, since I have some background in engineering I'm a little curious just like how this situation came to be that you would end up with one of the world's largest ships trapped in a canal Nine. Nine. Oh, sorry about that Eight. I got an echo Seven. Six. Five. looks like Four. I am the winner Three. of the canal opening Two. arena One. Congratulations Zero. to me. Yeah, getting people to sign up for... Uh, oh, I forgot this tournament does... Yeah, we're only going to stick around... Well, we stuck around five minutes. Nobody joined. Uh, let's just close the tournament. Um, so, that was what it was. Um, yeah, let's go seek a different tournament. Um, what other tournaments are currently ongoing, I wonder? Uh, there's a Rapid Arena. We've not done Rapid in a little while. Um, let's see, I'll do the best I can to try to get that opening, but probably not going to get it. That's a shame, because I really wanted to learn that one better, and I really wanted opponents to be able to exploit my opening weakness of not knowing Knight D7 lines. Which could maybe motivate me to do better. And then, like on the black side, I could try knight d7 and try whatever ideas have been tried against me. And that's the idea of playing a thematic tournament. It's like you take the idea from one game to the next to the next. Um, and hopefully are able to either score well or learn something from it. Okay, we're going to play this anyway. Pretend that it's the canal variation. This is actually a bad idea. Um, but, you know, you live and you learn. We're going to learn the hard way this time. Alright, we've actually put this nice little wedge into the opponent's position. It's not so easy for them to deal with. Oh, I need to protect this. Um, I'm trapping my bishop, but I don't think my bishop has any future on this diagonal either. Okay, 
Um, interesting. Wait, this gives my knight a place to go. Unless they're seriously considering playing pawn e6. Um, right. So, one, yeah, they could do this. I saw they could do this, and I've come back, and my bishop's not hanging. I saw that. I didn't think they'd actually play pawn e6, because this weakens their king side. But they played it. Uh, so now knight can go back this way. Um, my knight can still go back that way. So I kick their queen. This bishop's going to come out with a vengeance. I can't play bishop a4 with tempo because they play pawn b5 and after exchanges I do not stand better. So we'll just activate our pieces, connect the rooks. Um, I guess queen d2 connects the rooks and gives me access to bishop f4. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Why this pawn move? My knight does not stand poorly on c3. Okay. What's the big idea? Oh, this is still defended. My mistake. I can still play bishop h6. Yeah, bishop h6 gives me more access to... Wait, 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 wait. This is risky. This is risky. That's the big idea. Also, bishop h6 drops my c2 bishop, which is not so smart. All right. How do we get out of this? I think this is how we escape. They'd say never play f6. So we'll play this. Um, yeah, this position's pretty sad. All right, so I've messed up very badly. Um, my bishop stands poorly on c2. It stands better on a4 than on c2, but that's not saying much. So they're going to play... Well, they can't play rook d8, because they forgot to kick my bishop. They're preparing for an e5 push, which I'm trying to delay. But also I'm trying to make sure my bishop doesn't get stranded on c2 forever. So I accidentally played a good move because I was trying to defend this pawn. Now my bishop's crisscross into the opponent's position, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, because they forgot to kick this bishop away, I have threats all of a sudden. I saw that. So this opens another line for my bishop. Um, yeah, no, I can't allow pawn c4. So we're going to play this. If pawn c4 landed, I would be overwhelmed because they have a pawn and a queen hitting that. So instead, we're going to not lose my bishop. Okay, and then we take the knight. And if they take back, oh, we're in check. Well, that's fine. Whatever. It's okay. So this is attacked. This is attacking. Right. Um, let's drop this back. So this is a nice little target. Just accidentally struck. Um, I could take it. Rook takes, rook takes, rook pins. Let's not win the game. That's unfortunate. Um, hmm. 
My position's being overrun. We're going to defend g2 and b2. Thankfully, queen takes b3 does not just win. Um, I could exchange their queen for bishop and rook, but it does not win. Oh, I could, well, bishop takes is no better than rook takes. I'm trying to pile up to take this backward pawn here. Um... Hmm. I have to take. Um, play the rook to the open file, just on principle. But also because probably the tactics favor doing it, I need to follow with, uh, well, h4 soon, so I don't get back rake mated. Uh, but yeah, I'm trying to defend b2 here. So if rook takes, rook takes, and then they could do rook takes a2, and I need to play like h4 and pray. That's the plan. I guess pawn b3 would have been another way to like survive this. I got, uh, I got tricked into thinking I was under a lot of time pressure. So I defend this. Rook takes is natural here. And I'm not sure if I play queen e1 or pawn h4. Um, now if queen e1, they just take here. And I potentially get my queen pinned to my king. So it's going to have to be pawn h4, which is risky. But Oh, that's a free bishop. That makes no sense to me. What have I missed? So this is a target. If the queen moves away, like I could potentially do this sort of stuff. Um, Rook e8. Even queen e8 is threatened, so like, that's a fork. Time pressure makes fools of us all. Um, let's do this the fancy way. Alright, good game. This is the hourly rapid arena. Again, I hope to be learning the canal opening, so... Um, we're going to play the Sicilian, even though it's not my main weapon. And although, almost assuredly, the opponent will not play the canal variation. Uh, we'll try to aim for it anyway. There's a Sicilian. All right, and canal variation's not possible, but let's... Oh, they didn't play bishop b5. What a surprise. So this is the Marazzi bind. I should do something about the d4 square. Okay, yeah, now I control the d4 square. The Marazzi bind's denied. Um, well, this is interesting, too. Are they going to break this pin? They are not breaking the pin, so I'm just going to attack and see how they react to this. I should have played queen d7. That way they can't eject my bishop without playing f3. But never play f3, they say. Alright. Uh, I want a castle. Truly, I do. <sighs> have to castle. I don't have a choice. 
All right, so they're threatening stuff. Um, hmm. We're going to preserve our bishop, which is insane, but we're doing it anyway. So if they play bishop h6, I'm just going to retreat back here and try to make things complicated. Because I sense that my opponent is trying to avoid theoretical stuff, and I want to play something more confusing. Right. Um... So, I'm threatening this. Maybe I'm even threatening f6. I'm threatening a lot of things here. Like, knight d4 is probably my main idea. Um, okay, they've broken the line between my bishop and my queen. Um... seems to be a pretty clear trigger that I should be exchanging this bishop right now. And then bringing my bishop out and then playing f6. To close the position. Um... Actually, this looks interesting. So c4 is loose if they push d4. If they don't push d4, my knight just controls some space here. I might be threatening knight g4, I'm not sure. Um, but this keeps things up in the air and denies their bishop here anyway to get into the game on b7. Potentially a6, b5 is an idea. Um, wow. Okay, that's odd. So I said maybe I was threatening knight g4. But now definitely I'm threatening knight g4 because the bishop's not defended. And bishop d4 is a thing. So loose pieces drop off. Uh... Yeah, why would you play knight f4 so quickly? Um, I guess knight takes knight must be a pretty serious threat, and I didn't even look at it. That's not good. I should have looked at it. Even if it's... Even if I survive this, I should have looked at this first. If I don't survive it, definitely I should have looked, but... Um, so I control the square. I think I just got massively impatient. But also I usually don't play the Sicilian. So if their queen moves, I have knight f2 at the very worst. So I'm like surviving whatever they throw at me with king h8, rook g8, knight f2. I do survive that. Um, I think I do, anyway. Hmm. Okay. So, 
Yeah, okay, I guess my knight doesn't have a lot of places to go. Wow, I am getting outplayed and not even knowing just how badly I'm outplayed. That's pretty special. Um, we have to take this. There's no way about that. Um, what's unfortunate here is just how exposed my king is. Um, so I've been trying to close the center, and it doesn't look like I've been successful at that. Um, I want to play pawn e5. Pawn e5 seems to lose the game, so we can't do that. Let's prevent them from playing pawn e5. So, hopefully, this gets to be a difficult end game, and somehow something happens and I win. Um, that seems unlikely. But that's the hope at this point. Uh, let's get the king into the corner. No, that drops the f-pawn. Wow. All right, that's not great. Um... Okay, let's get this rook out of the corner. Play a6, b5. Try to free our rook. Maybe our other rook goes to b8, or maybe we have rooks on b8 and a8. While our opponent's trying to figure out how to activate their rook. Uh, I'm not sure how they get a rook in front of my king, given that I control all the dark squares. Right. This seems natural. Um, are they just going to play pawn f6 and then queen h6? I'm just getting rolled here. Um, okay. Do I have something like this? No, I can't get my queen over here. There's some, the only path there would be like this many turns away, and they just stop it with rook f3. So I have no trick here. Um, we're gonna save king h8 for the last possible moment, which is probably next move. I don't think I can delay king h8 any longer. Because, like, f6 doesn't work, right? f6 is just asking for trouble. So, we get a duck into the corner, which drops this pawn. And it's okay that we drop the pawn. And it gives our king time to try to get out of this. Um, I mean, this looks spooky. But if pawns exchange and I play pawn e6, then it's not so simple. Right, and even here it's not so simple, because I control f5, and I control f7. So I control some very specific key squares, and this gives me time to play rook g8. So rook g8 gets played. I'm not sure which direction I go from here. Um, I guess we take our rook off of this long diagonal in case my bishop does end up moving. <laughs> oh no, you are asking me if I want to do this. You already know what the answer is. Alright, we're doing it. We are so doing that. Uh, regardless how well advised that kind of thing is. 
I'm not backing down from that challenge. Uh, it looks too fun. Uh, can't believe they offered me that. Like, you knew that I was not going to say no to that, so you better be damn sure that that works before you offer it. Um, I mean, they could retreat the queen, and this looks really scary, but I don't think it works. Did I play King G8 here? That's a hard question. I think King G8's forced. No, King G8 gets me mated. Um, we're going to prevent Bishop D5 or any such nonsense here. And then play A5. 5a4, and get our rook out. Right, our opponent tries to find good moves here. So now do we play rook g8, or king h8, or king g8, or something? Like, this is so confusing. I think now I have to play this. And if the bishop moves, then e4 is hanging. And if they do pawn takes, like, I've created a fortress. Right, and if they do this, I have rook g5, but no, their pawn is hanging. Um, um, interesting position. I think I've got to play like this. And I think my king runs with tempo. Maybe I'm losing my queen for a rook here. Probably I'm losing my queen for a rook. Um... Also, the queen defends this. Yeah, I think I'm in trouble. Um, hmm. I'm in a lot of trouble. There's no escaping their attack. It was a very well-conducted attack, and I just did not believe in it at all. Um, and now that I see it, it's kind of hard not to believe in. Um, so that's the gift of hindsight. I don't have a choice. Oh, well, nicely played. 2200. That explains something. All right, well, that was a well-fought game. Um, maybe I should have stopped to think a bit more. But that was too interesting. I got carried away. All right, we can't do the canal opening, so let's do a gambit. Let's see if our opponent has studied gambits. Is this how to play this? This is not how to play this. I've played bishop e7 before here. Problem is bishop h4 isn't really a threat because there's no follow-up. Oh, I made a special user style. A lot of people keep asking me this question. I used to have a link for it, except userstyles.org is sometimes broken, so often this link does not resolve. But if you can get the link to resolve, that's where you'd find the user style. I'll have to publish a guide at some point about where to go get an updated version of this.
but okay, yeah, this is... Our opponent's considering exchanging off their good bishop to preserve a bishop on h4, um, which is just ill-placed. I don't know if I want to take this. don't know if I want to take this. Um, let's defend our center and threaten stuff. Lots of various stuff is threatened. So I wonder how my opponent will react to this. Really, this is my target. But... Like this knight, I've defended this, I'm defending that. They've put their bishop on kind of a weird square, or it prevents their knight from entering. Um, so this is my target. Uh, free download. I Again, that, that link could be broken. Um, but if the link's not broken, it should lead to userstyles.org, which should give you guidance about how to install the free user style. So I don't know that it would be like a file to download, but if you get like, if you find a browser plugin by the name of Stylus, S-T-Y-L-U-S, um, then you will find it helps you install uh, user styles that make web pages look nice. So if they hit my queen, I hit their queen. I just win material. But separately, um, their position's pretty awkward here. This is loose, but I can't attack it directly, so I'm just going to try to activate all my pieces. Uh, knight takes here, followed by activating my bishop and rook e1. Well, it's not check, but it'd be nice to win their king in the center of the board. It's wishful thinking, isn't it? But also, like, this is a threat. So I'm not sure whether this or that's the actual thing being threatened. It's, yeah, there's a lot going on. Um, Bishop d2 doesn't look bad either. It's a crafty little waiting move. Well, it blocks my rook and its re-entry into the game. Um, yeah, let's just take this. Um, then we control e5, threatening rook d1. I'm like tremendously impatient at the moment, and I don't know why. Like, this is a nice position, I should try to enjoy it a bit. Um, there's a check. I just pick up this pawn at my leisure. All right, they've dealt with my check. But I can pile up on this knight. And how do they pile up defending it? So bishop d5, then bishop g5 seems to win a knight. They, I'm sorry, they're threatening bishop takes f3. So we've dealt with bishop takes f3 threats. Um,
I don't know if this or bishop d6 was the better play here. So they can't castle. This is an interesting position. My rook is still trapped in the corner. Which is pretty terrible, but... Always look on the bright side of life. Um... Yeah, I don't know how to... Oh! Okay, they have considerably improved my day. Yeah, and I could play king g2 and everything's... Well, things are a bit better than they used to be. Um, if their threat was rook d2 check, rook d2 is not check here. I think they just gambled on rook d2 actually being check and miss that I just could move the rook and get my king out this way too. There's always, or there's, in chess there's usually more than one solution. How boring would chess be if there were only one best way to play the game? Alright, they threaten my king. We better defend this. Okay, that got messy in tremendous hurry. I'm in time trouble. I'm in so much time trouble because I have no increment. I lose. There's no escaping this loss. All right, I win on time. Uh, sometimes I play viewers, sure. Here I'm playing in the Outwardly Rapid Arena. Uh, I did start off this uh, session trying to get viewers to join a tournament, and just nobody showed up. And that's unfortunate, but... Here, um, I'm playing a Rapid Arena. There's no increment. And I just flagged an opponent who had been solidly outplaying me for the last 20 minutes. Um, so, yeah, rapid without increment is painful. Um, I feel bad for the guy, because like, he had me crushed. I just blitzed him at the very end.
Come on, canal opening. No canal opening. We're going to pretend that they played d6 anyway. <laughs> this is not white's smartest move ever, but um, normally if they play d6, you play the rest of Lima or the canal with bishop b5. Then it leads to some offbeat lines. Here, oh. Opponents seem to be transposing into things. It's got me curious, like, what's the meta on Lee Chess such that people would even consider transpositions? Um, okay. B5, we go back here. Um, we're gonna play, oh, really? So now we play pawn d4, and white has equalized. Um, except, okay, I was not paying any attention. So I don't equalize, and instead I'm probably lost. That's cool. Um, well, except this might be loose. What? Okay. Got him. All right, well, that was an opening. Um, I should just take this, honestly, but... Okay. Um, yeah, a knight does a good job blocking a center pawn. Well, we both have four minutes left to enjoy this position looks like a tricky position honestly but uh, we're up in exchange so that can't be too bad um, let's activate my rook if they play knight here I'll just exchange this um, and block over there instead. I don't understand what they're doing. I don't think they understand what I'm doing either. I don't think they understand what they're doing. I don't think I understand what I'm doing. So, like, I think that covers our complete lack of understanding. Um, until you start accounting for, like, the incompleteness theorem. And how, like, a person could not understand somebody else's not understanding of something. And just get more and more meta about it. Um, so obviously they're threatening bishop takes the sacrifice, but I don't think it works. Right, and that's the other idea they're threatening. I don't think that works either. I think I actually have a counterplay here. because my knight defends g2. So, like, they need to make a sacrifice to break in, but my knight still covers all the light squares. So that's why I'm confused what they're doing. So, yeah, I don't know how they managed to break my fortress, given that my knight is like perfectly situated to defend all the light squares, and they have a difficult time opposing the knight without giving up their valuable dark squared bishop, which is defending their king.
also I'm threatening stuff against their king. So, yeah. All right, but this is check. Okay, and then this is check. And this is actually not hanging like I thought it was. Um, I should be a bit more careful. Even so, like, okay, queen f8 check is threatened. If they check me with the bishop, I just take it. Knight takes bishop. So, again, my knight seems pretty well positioned to deal with a lot of stuff. Um, if their king gets forced out to f6, I have a fork if this bishop's not here. It's like, all their pieces are almost loose. All right, and then that's mate and one. Good game. Man, I am playing very well tonight. Minus all of my opening blunders. Like, I don't know what it is. I think it's just that um, my rating has seen a dip recently. And as my rating starts to increase back upward, um, I'm getting opponents that are rated lower than I am as uh, opposition. So it's just really allowing me to show off uh, some tactics. I think that's what's going on. I don't think it's that I'm doing anything extraordinary, although it feels that way. But I don't think it's that I'm doing anything extraordinary. All right. Let's play something crazy. That square is mine, that square is still mine, that square is so mine. It's possible that in my tremendous hurry in that opening I might have passed up an opportunity to win a pawn. Um, that could have happened. I was not carefully watching all the pawns. So if I've missed such an opportunity, well, oh well. Um, let's put the rook on a useful square. This might be a sack in the future. All right, our opponent is attuned to what's going on. Um. Let's play aggressively. Wait, I think I meant attenuated, not attuned. But yeah, this is loose. And for them to protect this, they will need to take the f4 square. That was my thinking. And then to take the f4 square, they will need to dislodge all my pieces that defend that square. But also, this is a target. So we'll just pile all our pieces on the g2 square. While continuing to control f4 and e5. Now we just take e5 for free, right? Um, this is better than taking e5. Okay, am I winning? This feels very winning. This feels very, very winning. Um, I don't see a win. I'll just take this pawn.
I should have no taking this is no better. Let's check. Whoa. Whoa, buddy. Really? Even if that doesn't lose? Like, golly. Rook takes, queen takes, king g7. Queen takes, queen takes, king f2, king here, king e3, king there. I'm winning. This pawn endgame is lost. Unless I've missed something super fundamental here. Um, also, I could have just taken this. There's not much to calculate there. All right. Yeah, like this end game is not at all pleasant for white. Um, I don't need the pawn. A good game. I don't understand what they're doing. Seventeen forty nine. Okay, that makes sense. Oh no, I'm going to stalemate them. Wouldn't that be a shame? Oh, it's not even a stalemate trap. Wow. Okay, fine. Thanks for the game. Well, we finished in the top 50, uh, despite joining an hour late. I don't know if there's time for one more game, because um, the time control is 10 minutes, and each player would get at least 5. Like, it's very unlikely I could finish a game unless both players are really hustling it. So, anywho, um, yeah, again, our thoughts and prayers are with the folks in Egypt as they try to uh, free up that canal. It's just such an engineering situation. I cannot imagine being thrust into it. Um, but thankfully, somebody is willing to put themselves in the way and take care of such a confusing thing. Right, that's not the canal opening either. Pawn E5? That's not Pawn E5. I mean, I'm playing... Oh, well, they're not even going to call my bluff on that. That's too bad. Um... Alright, this bishop's a tart. I should have done Knight D7 to be sneaky about it. Um, 
so this is loose. Right. Okay, finally they call my bluff on one of these silly gambit ideas I have. They're not taking the bait. We're going to have a long, protracted, positional thing. And I'll have to eventually get my pieces active one way or another. That's awkward. All right. Um. Hmm. All right, their bishop cannot hit my queen if their bishop's over here. So I take advantage of that. I'll try to keep half of this position closed and eventually push to open the king's side. Assuming that this bishop forever stays here, and it might. Um, but also I want to find a path for my bishop to freedom. Maybe this way. It's awkward, but is there anything better? Like, I want to play this, but how much do I want to play it? Um, Everything is loose. Okay, we're going to double rooks over here. This gives my other pieces a little bit of breathing room. This is such an interesting little sandwich here. I don't think they did that on purpose. But it is like they've blocked their bishop. Their other rook, I mean, normally a rook battery is fine, but here the rooks are just colliding with each other. It's going to take many, many turns for my bishop to get out of b7, but um, at least as many turns for their pieces to get untangled. So yeah, this is our canal experience of the day. It might not be the canal opening, but it's the canal middle game. So, knight f8, bishop g5. I don't know how this bishop's going to get out, but... I'm careful about breaking open the queen side where my opponent has a stronger position. Uh, So, yeah, we will, well, if they're going to let me and Bishop have access to C8, um, then that's okay. I see they're planning Knight G3, Knight F5 sorts of things, and I think my Knight F8 will deal with that, but also Bishop C8 will become possible. I'm asking them to move this, and really what I'm asking is please exchange here, and they did. So now I could play bishop c8 in response to their knight g3, knight f5. I also control the c file. So their failure to open the queen side has resulted in me controlling the queen side. Um, normally I would be pushing a5, but it's just not happening in this position. Um, So yeah, we'll bring our bishop out this way. And, oops, knight b6 to c4 seems like an idea. 
Bishop c1 I should have considered. But I don't like my bishop being stuck on b7. Also, my knight on c4 doesn't do very well. Maybe it does more than I give it credit for. Um, I'm pretty sure I need my knight on f8. Yeah, I need this over here so that I can continue defending this with the queen. Um, well, they got six minutes left to think about this, but I think our tournament's over. Yeah, our tournament ended, so I can take my time here. Not that I need to, but I can. So this is my next idea. I think they're going to move the queen away from this. Probably. Yeah, they've moved the queen away. Let's exchange bishops. Actually, they're not even going to take this. <laughs> Wait, does this force bishop f or bishop a1? Like, that wasn't my intent, but it seems that's the upshot of this. Is that it's actually very difficult for their bishop to stay active. They might sack it on e5 just out of frustration. But that sacrifice doesn't go anywhere. They don't have a way to defend it on b2, so... Also, moving it to a1 drops the a pawn, which is not my... I didn't think I was going to be uh, pawn hunting, but um, that seems to have happened now. So we're threatening queen c1 check. Again, the check is just icing on the cake. Really, we're also threatening this pawn. And they can't even play bishop c3 to defend the pawn. Right, so then this is check. And we've trapped their pieces. And let's just exchange this. I'm really just trying to get them to resign. So, sometimes demoralizing the opponent can be the most effective move in the position. Um, and sometimes that's easy to find a way to do. Often it's not. But yeah, my knight was useless on f8, so we need to find another home for it. Um... And I don't have any good discoveries here, so I'll just go directly to e5. Um, they might intend bishop takes, and we'll just take this way. But also we're threatening king g7 and bishop g4, probably, mate. Yeah. So, that's an idea. Um... G5, oh, hang on. This forces their king away from the G3 pawn. And any chance of being able to defend this position. Wait. I don't have checkmate here. Or do I? No, bishop takes E5 is threatened. Um... Bishop g4, king here, check, king up, there's no mate. Um, we'll just win this way. This 
So now their bishop has to go back to defend the pawn, and we give checkmate. I'm sorry, they could defend it this way too. But yeah, this seems to be the critical square. If they try to use this other bishop to defend f1, um, that's interesting too. If bishop e1, I could sack on b4 and probably have mate. Yeah, so they do the obvious capture. And now this is responsible for that. Um, oh, they're trying to take this. That actually is mildly interesting. Um, they're also trying to stalemate themselves, which is not going to work. So now they have to play bishop a2 first. If they play pawn d6, bishop e6 to f7 is checkmate. All right, so we play this here. And then this is mate in one. I could have done, gone bishop d7, but that's not as aesthetic. All right. Woo! All right, 33rd place out of 362 participants. Not bad. Um, also, yeah, check that out. There's an Arena API documentation for programmers who think they can do cool stuff with arenas. So I know a number of times it's been promote, proposed that we have other pairing formats. Um, well, I'm not sure if the Arena API documentation would cover that, but still... Uh, you can get live results from arenas and things like that. So check out the Leech S API. There's a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, let's see, is this game... Well, this is sharp, but yeah. Uh, we'll leave the rest as an exercise for the viewer to analyze. Uh, those are some interesting games. Um, we'll do one puzzle racer. This is Seven, exciting stuff. Six, five, and then four, that'll be that. Three, two. One, zero. Oh dear. Mate. Mate. Not mate. Where's my... Where's the fork? Here's the fork. Where's the fork? Here's the fork. Alright. Uh, not mate. Oh, this is got... I think they tweaked the algorithm, the puzzle selector, so that um, it doesn't always give you obvious moves, uh, like uh, the difficulty steps up a bit faster than it used to. Um, and I appreciate that there is that little switch you can throw like once per contest, because sometimes you will just get stuck on a problem and just have no idea what to do. If you get stuck more than once, well, that's too bad, but um, it's a free queen. Um, let's free queen again. Probably take this. The answer is almost always check or capture. As long as your king's not in a mating net, you could pretty much do anything. Um, so, also, yeah, 90 seconds. It flies so quickly. Wait, I'm out of switches. I don't know what to do here. <laughs> oh, oh, that stings. What's the move? What is this? I want to stop this. Huh. That's an awesome move. How does black stop it? Is it really bishop a4? Can I find out what the answer is? I guess not. All right, that's another exercise for a viewer. Figure out whether or not bishop a4 allows any white allows white any trickery like bishop a4 d5 to stop bishop c6, pawn takes, bishop takes. Like can black actually stop the pawn? Well, if pawn takes, bishop takes, then you've got bishop c5. Okay, yeah, black's fine. But geez, that is really interesting. Anyhow, I hope everybody enjoyed. Thanks for watching.
Have a good night.